Welcome, my dear listener. Allow me to begin our fellowship today's prayers. Master, all my listeners, I bring them into your presence. You bless them, dear Master, and guide them in their ways. And even as they listen, they will be blessed in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. In our fellowship today, we are going to look at grumbling against the Lord. I'm going to read the book of Numbers, chapter number 21, as well as chapter number 14. We're only going to quote a few verses, and I'm going to make reference to them and other verses as it deems important. Straight away, let me read the book of Numbers, chapter number 14, and I'll read the verse that I want to, to make reference to, and then I'll go to 21. Allow me to read Numbers, chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a linda and go back to Egypt. Over now to chapter Number 21, verse 4 and 6, that's what I'll read. They traveled to Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go round Endom, but the people grew impatient. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, We are, why have you brought us up? Out of Egypt to die in the desert. There is no bread, there is no water. And we detest this miserable food. So, what you're seeing is a group of people that have gone through many things, but the most striking thing is their complaint to God is a grumbling. Actually, the Bible talks about they grumbled against God. This is in, specifically in chapter 14. They grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And these were the representatives of God. But they too forgot that God had brought them through many things. Remember the Red Sea? <laughs> How he separated waters? How he gave them manners and quails. How he fought against them. But the, these people were so quick to forget what the Lord had done to them. That is why I come to you. Trying to bring to you the image of these Israelites. We are the Israelites of today. Because sometimes we grumble against our rod. We grumble so much. And we forget, we do, not, we, fo we do not remember what he has done for us. We do not remember him taking us through our, our Egypt, through our journey to the desert. How he has protected us, separating waters, sending ten plagues to our enemies. And when a bad thing strike on us, we are always the first one to grumble against the Lord. But this time, my dear listener, I want to speak to you categorically about minding what you speak. Always be keen. Because most of the time we grumble when bad things happen to us. But it is not acceptable. When we grumble against the Lord, the Lord takes away His grace from us. When we grumble against the Lord, the Lord 
we let our enemies to destroy us? You know, you might think, yes, the small thing that you got is the enemy has attacked you. But the minute you grumble, even the protection that had been left on you will be taken away. Therefore, my dear listener, I want to urge you, avoid that habit. Don't look at the case of Job. Despite all the troubles Job went through, we see a man who always sinned fast in God. And in chapter 2, verse 9, his wife comes and tells him, Man, look, you have suffered a lot. Why don't you cast God and die? Sometimes we grumble and curse God. But because of his grace, he sometimes spare us. But let us not always grumble against the Lord. Because if Job goes ahead and asks them, when good things come, we appreciate them. We thank God for them. So why should we not thank him when bad things come to us? When you go back to the story of the Israelites, look, they are complaining in chapter 14. After the report has come, and they are being told that these people will consume us. But you have two characters, Caleb and Joshua. They are saying, no, stop grumbling against the Lord. Have you forgotten the way he has fought for you? And these people are like brain to us. If the Lord is pleased, he's going to give us this land. And the Lord was so angry with their grumbling. I want you to look at the instances when God, when people grumbled against the Lord and what happened to them. Check, for example, in chapter 14, what happens? They are told that anybody who is 40 years or below, is 40 years and above, is not going to enter the promised land. That is automatic death. If you come to the chapter 21, he sends venomous snakes. Interesting. And many died. Look at the case of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. What happens? And even before that, look after they were planning to stone Moses. What happens to the what happens? The Lord wants to destroy them. But Moses was a very humble man, prince with God. Please, God, don't destroy them. Have mercy on them. The Egyptians are going to hear it. They're going to say their God was not able to make them rich where they were going. <clears throat> so what I would urge you, always thank God in all circumstances. Don't give your enemies a chance by grumbling against the Lord. Always thank him. It's hard. But I want you to believe. And I want you to know. That he's God. From beginning to the end. And he doesn't need a man to be a God who is. You don't do him a favor. You don't do him a favor. And who are you even to question him? We should have time to read the book of Job. How he asked the, the questions he asked. Were you there when the foundations of the earth were formed? Can you command the crocodile to come out of the water? So he brings about his majesty. He's a great God. And, God, and my listener, please, I urge you in the name of the Lord that keep off from grumbling. Don't be like the Israelites because the consequences are going to be upon you. May the Lord bless you. Allow me once again to close with the prayers. Master, thank you for the short time you've granted unto us to share your word with my dear listeners. May it be a blessing to them. May you minister unto them in Jesus' name. Amen.